Rivers, back in pioneer days, were the way we traveled. It's the way the Indians traveled. The new river was known as the Shawnee War River. We've lost that, and then commerce came along, and we've lost that. So now they're they're being forgotten. And uh, if we don't watch it, they'll be ruined if people have a chance to do that. So we've got to, got to pay attention to them. The new is sort of forgotten. There would have been a dam built at the mouth of Wilson. That would have been a terrible thing, a hydro dam, just another hydro dam if people hadn't stomped it down there. The people Noah Adams is talking about actually stopped two dams, a pump storage operation that would have blocked the new river near the town of Independence and again near the city of Galax. The system would have used more power than it generated and it would have flooded more than 40,000 acres of Virginia and North Carolina. It took a decade of activism, agitating, and lobbying to stop it. The organization that came out of the fight was called the National Committee for the New River. One of the things the committee does is organize an annual river trip. In July of 2010, a small group of paddlers gathered in Boone, North Carolina, wading around in water barely deep enough to wet their shins. That little creek is the South Fork of the New River. Those people were beginning the National Committee for the New River's second New River Expedition. The trip would start there in Boone, the first place the river becomes wide enough to float a canoe. The journey's end was more than 300 miles away in Golly Bridge, West Virginia. That's where the New River joins with the Golly to form the canal. The fight that the National Committee for the New River was born out of was won in 1976. But some people who got involved in that first big fight are still looking out for the river. Pat Considine, for instance. 1972, I first came into Ashe County. I uh, hitchhiked in. I discovered quickly that they were going to uh, flood a large uh, plain of land uh, through Ashe County, and, and, and it was really a, a grassroots effort of people who were losing their homes and their farms. I've come across people who, who the, uh, the husband was buying land in a particular area because it was highly likely a marina would be there, and the wife was on the National Committee for the New River. And it's like, I mean, it, it got that close. Because everybody knew somebody that was losing their farm. Um, and it was, and, and they were losing them. They were, you know, you get down through Crumpler, and everything was, um, or most things, uh, were were being uh, boarded up because the power company had already purchased the the land. Um, and then there was big auctions that went on after, uh, and a lot of the original people got their land back, but a lot of them didn't. They couldn't afford it back. Proctor Kirk was part of that first fight too. He and some of his friends paddled most of the expedition's route long ago. I can't remember the year. It's been so darn long ago. But it was during the struggle for the, the New River involving the Blue Ridge Power Project. The, the friends that were with me and myself were sort of hidden up the struggle to save the New River from the West Virginia side. You couldn't convince us the dam wasn't eventually going to be built, even though we were fighting like hell pardon that expression. And we decided that we better get down there if we wanted to see what that river looked like and run the river. So we came from West Virginia to a little place in Idlewild, North Carolina, had our wives bring us down. They dumped us in the river. It was about 10 yards wide at the place we dumped us in. There were, it seemed like a hundred low water bridges. You'd paddle maybe a mile and you'd have another low water bridge to go across and then you'd have to paddle around the cows. And there were fence posts down in the water, but it was quite a journey. But we paddled all the way back to West Virginia, which was, as I recall, a little over 200 miles. We spent, uh, as I recall, seven nights on the river. One of them we spent in a shanty that was uh, absolutely loaded up with black snakes. We call that the snake cabin. We took a lot of pictures, even of the black snakes, and it turns out the guy that had the camera put the film in upside down, and we didn't get any pictures. You know, most people don't know it, but there are seven dams on the New River. There's a little one here at Mouth of Wilson, which is the first one. And then there's Buck, Billsby, Freeze, Clater, Bluestone, and Hawk's Nest. But the dams in Virginia, particularly, for instance, that freeze. What you essentially had underneath that lake was about a 70-foot drop within a, a mile or a mile and a half. And can you imagine what the white water must have looked like underneath there? Same thing was true with Buck and Billsby Reservoirs. There had to be some absolutely gorgeous white water underneath those things. And, and we lamented all the way down the river not being able to run that river 
before those dams were put there because it had to be magnificent. No more dams have been built on the New River since Kirk and his buddies paddled their aluminum canoes into Hinton. It took an act of Congress to prevent it. When the river was protected from the uh, Appalachian Power Dam, uh, part of what truly protected it was the designation of the river as a national wild and scenic river. Uh, it, it's a 26.6 mile stretch of the river that starts at Dog Creek. And thus, because it's a national uh, um, scenic river, you're not allowed to put power dams on it any longer. So it has protected the area from the power companies forever. So it's been a great boom for the area to, to not have a power dam, <laughs> power dam and destroy, and not to destroy the farmland. And, and so on. We would be under a significant amount of water right here, all for the purpose of creating power that would be used in the mid-states in Ohio and the like uh, at peak electricity times. But it really took more electricity to create the electricity than what they created. It was sort of a, a silly concept, but of course, silly things can happen. Mike Horn, who was also on last summer's expedition, got involved toward the end of that damn fight. When I graduated from college back in 1975, one of my first jobs was, was with the Isaac Walton League of America in Washington, D.C., and that was at the tail end of the first effort to uh, try to, uh, I guess, save that section of New River that was endangered by the Appalachian Power uh, Dam project. And I came in on the tail end of that and was able to be part of that, so that was my first introduction with the New River. It was a Rose Garden signing at the White House. It was a pretty spectacular deal because it went right down to the very last day that Congress could consider this particular bill before uh, it was going to go back into committee. And Steve Neal, Congressman Steve Neal from North Carolina, was absolutely instrumental in bringing a group of folks down and put them on the river those last few days. And, uh, and then we were very fortunate enough to have the votes in the Senate and the votes in the House to get the bill out. And the, of course, the White House signed it. And then some 30 years later, I was enlisted to help with um, stopping a prison that was going to be built there, at really the same location that they were going to build the dam. And we were successful in defeating the prison. More engaged here recently because of recognizing the value that we really have to do something more aggressively to protect the river and protect this tremendous resource that we have. It's a tremendous resource that faces tremendous challenges. Communities along its banks draw drinking water from the river and flush waste into it. The New River is famous for sport fishing, but Virginia's Department of Health warns against consuming some of its fish if they're tainted with PCBs. An American Heritage River, its banks hold a coal-fired power plant and coal ash pits that hold that plant's waste. A magnet for outdoor enthusiasts it has also attracted lots of industry, including Virginia's largest single polluter. The New River Gorge National River, famous for whitewater rafting, is what water quality experts call impaired. It carries more fecal coliform bacteria than a healthy river should. All sorts of things get into the river that shouldn't be there. This year, volunteers pulled more than 22 and a half tons of trash from the river. It rained hard the night before the last day of the trip. It was still raining when five boats put in the river between Hawks Nest Dam and Gully Bridge. The expedition skipped that part of the river because most of the time the river isn't there. In the 1930s, a Union Carbide subsidiary diverted the river into a three mile long tunnel through Gully Mountain. The rock they were digging and blasting through was silica. No one can agree on the numbers, but hundreds and probably thousands of workers died from silicosis, a disease that scars lungs and damages immune systems. Water falls 160 feet through that tunnel, driving the power plant where the expedition would begin its last paddle. Upriver from that plant, the water is usually shallow enough and calm enough that a person can wade it without any problem. It's called the dries, but all that rain changed things. I really thought that was spectacular that we were able to paddle up the dries for, for farther than we've ever had. It was more water in the dries than we've seen in, in the few years that we've done this. And you could really see what a river bottom looks like. And you can just imagine what that river would be like if it was allowed to freely flow down through there. I mean, those rocks and those boulders were just spectacular. And the, I think more and more awareness around dams and around their impacts on rivers, I think that's becoming more and more an issue. And I, that probably has become the most obvious part of all this. When the current got too strong, some of the paddlers dragged their boats along the rocks and bobbed back down the little rapids. Then five boats paddled out of the drives, past the hydroelectric power plant, past houses wedged between river and railroad, past an old bus that's become a cottage on a rocky island and into the edge of the gully. There, where the new river ends, the group shared a toast. All right, 
right, Mike. Do the honor. Are we man. ready to pop? Pop that core. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, take. To the 2010 there expedition. You go. Here, here. The end of the New River once again. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, National Committee for the New River. The importance of organizations like the National Committee for the New River and, and, and a lot of the other smaller organizations and larger organizations that have taken the responsibility to try to protect and preserve our natural resources can't be underestimated in terms of their value to society. There will be kids that will be able to paddle the New River uh, 100 years from now because of what the National Committee for the New River has done. They'll be able to have that same spiritual experience, understand what it means to protect those things which God and nature gave us.